Kelly Fyodorik. And uh, evidently, Susan Yasho Hara is not here. Uh, I would ask Representative Corvesi to take the fourth seat at the table. Uh, Kelly Fyodorik. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the committee, is my mic on? My name is Kelly Fedorik, and I'm an attorney with Alliance Defending Freedom, where I hold the title of litigation counsel. Alliance Defending Freedom is a national legal alliance, and we work and litigate cases across the country and internationally involving religious freedom, marriage and the family, and the sanctity of life. I have submitted my full statement in writing, which I ask to be made part of the record. Tonight, I am pleased to be before this committee to speak on the legal impact that this bill, H5015, will have on Rhode Island citizens' religious freedom if it is enacted. Our country has a long standing tradition of respect and tolerance for the viewpoints of all Americans. While this bill offers a limited protection for religious clergy, ordinary Rhode Islanders, and other religious, as you, Representative Lima, mentioned, are left unprotected and may well be for may well be forced to violate their deeply held religious convictions. This bill not only raises constitutional concerns, but the absence of religious protections for everyone is curiously inequitable, considering that where same-sex unions are legal, same-sex couples are able to celebrate their unions and find individuals and businesses <coughs> eager and happy to assist them with their ceremonies. Yet we have handled multiple cases where laws expanding sexual liberty have negatively impacted those who hold religious beliefs about sex and marriage. Tonight I would like to share just a couple stories, although many exist, where the religious freedom of regular everyday Americans have been violated because they hold a particular belief about marriage. And it's important to note that this is not a belief about homosexual behavior. This is a belief that marriage is between one man and one woman and that society should strengthen and protect marriage, not undermine it. And, where the and yet where the state demands that these individuals change their beliefs on marriage, these people are being persecuted, even forced to suffer economic loss. One example of this discrimination occurred in Boston, Massachusetts with Catholic charities. They were forced out of the adoption business by the Massachusetts government. What makes this case particularly tragic is that Catholic charities worked with adoption services, but they worked to place children with special needs in homes. They worked to help these little boys and little girls with disabilities to be protected with mothers and fathers who would care for them and would provide for them. But the Commonwealth of Massachusetts gave Catholic charities a diabolic choice. They said they could either violate their deeply held religious beliefs and violate the principles of the Catholic Church and adopt the same-sex couples, or they could get out of the business, adoption business altogether. By forcing Catholic charities' hand, the government harmed innocent children merely because it refused to practice tolerance tolerance of all viewpoints. M and notably, Massachusetts has adoption agencies that do adopt to same-sex couples. It's inexplicable why Catholic Charities was not able to continue to help children according to the precepts of its faith, especially when these same-sex couples were still being served by other adoption agencies. That is not religious freedom. That is religious intolerance. <coughs> we represent a photographer in New Mexico a young woman who was asked to photograph a same-sex commitment ceremony. This young woman respectfully declined the offer because of her strong beliefs on marriage. The same-sex couple went on to find another photographer, and they had a successful commitment ceremony. Yet they came back after their commitment ceremony and persecuted this young girl. They sued her. They called her before the New Mexico Human Rights Commission and fined her $6,600 for discrimination. We are currently representing this young woman on appeal. But the point remains, what happened to this young lady is not religious freedom. This is religious intolerance. <coughs> With a couple in question able to hold the ceremony they wanted, the persecution of this young girl remains inexplicable. There is a counselor, Marsha Walden, in the state of Georgia, who was asked to counsel a woman and her same-sex partner who were having relationship troubles. Because of her beliefs about marriage, she respectfully declined and referred this young woman and her partner to one of her colleagues, a fellow counselor. They were receiving counseling in less than 10 minutes and also noted afterwards that this other counselor gave them exemplary counseling services. Yet they filed a complaint saying that she was being discriminatory, which ultimately led to Marsha's 
termination from her employment. Again, what happened to this counselor is not religious freedom. This is religious intolerance. The woman seeking counseling got what she needed, but the persecution of this counselor was unnecessary. I analyzed H5015, and it contains no language that would provide comprehensive safeguards for the religious freedom of citizens in Rhode Island. And notably, the civil union bill that was passed last year provided not comprehensive, but greater safeguards than this bill does. No language here purported to address, let alone protect, the right to religious freedom of Rhode Island citizens. H5015 leaves unprotected judges who don't want to solemnize a union. They leave unprotected wedding venue owners, Catholic hospitals, Catholic nursing homes, Catholic schools, clerks, bakeries, the list goes on and on. In conclusion, it was the desire for the right to think freely, to participate in life freely, and to worship freely that drove the very foundations of our country and the state of Rhode Island. And we should not, with all due respect, go forward with any legisla legislation that fails to protect the religious freedom of all citizens. The religious protections put forth in this proposed legislation are not only inadequate, but the extreme narrowness of those protections suggests an intent to legislate prejudice towards individuals who possess deeply held religious beliefs about marriage. As the Sixth Circuit recently noted in its opinion, declaring that a university cannot compel a student to alter or violate her belief system, tolerance is a two-way street. Madam Chairwoman and distinguished panel, I ask that you protect all Rhode Islanders and that you safeguard the constitutionally protected religious freedoms of all citizens. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members for the opportunity to appear tonight. I stand ready to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Fyodoric. Am I saying the name right? It's Fedoric. Fedoric. <laughs> it's a hard one. Okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Representative Lima has a question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Because last year during the testimony, we heard the issue that I was asking Father Healy about PC, where they allow married couples to live in the same room in a dorm. Mm -hmm. Do they allow divorced couples to live together? I'm not sure what Providence College is. Oh, um, okay. I thought Father uh, Healy said you were, you were the expert on that. I, I know yeah. that this bill fails to comprehensively protect the religious freedom of all, of all people, and it includes Catholic schools, if they don't want to recognize um, a same-sex marriage. But I don't know what Providence College um, policies are on that. Do you have language that addresses that specific issue? And I, I don't mean like the photographer. I mean the religious institution for not going against their own principles. The, yes, to the front amendment to the, to the bill. You yes, have we, language yes, that do. addresses I can provide that. that. For you. Yes, is that in your testimony, in your papers, that you're giving us a copy? Uh, it is not, but I can provide that to you separately. Okay, thanks. Yes, you're welcome. 